Joseph Smith's Key to Understanding the Revelation of St. John the Divine I have tried for a number of years to get the minds of the saints prepared to receive the things of God. But we frequently see some of them, after suffering all they have for the work of God, will fly to pieces like glass as soon as anything comes that is contrary to their traditions. They cannot stand the fire at all. How many will be able to abide a celestial law, and go through and receive their exaltation, I am unable to say, as many are called, but few are chosen. The great thing for us to know is to comprehend what God did institute before the foundation of the world. Who knows it? It is the constitutional disposition of mankind to set up stakes and set bounds to the work and ways of the Almighty. We believe in the gift of the Holy Ghost being enjoyed now, as much as it was in the Apostles' days. We believe in it in all its fullness and power and greatness and glory. But whilst we do this, we believe in it rationally, consistently, and scripturally, and not according to the wild vagaries, foolish notions, and traditions of men. Now taking it for granted that the scriptures say what they mean, and mean what they say. We have sufficient grounds to go on and prove from the Bible that the gospel has always been the same, the ordinances to fulfill its requirements, the same, and the officers to officiate, the same. And the signs and fruits resulting from the promises, the same. The things which John saw had no allusion to the scenes of the days of Adam, Enoch, Abraham, or Jesus. Only so far as is plainly represented by John, and clearly set forth by him. John saw that only which was lying in futurity and which was shortly to come to pass. See Revelation chapter 1 verses 1 to 3, which is a key to the whole subject, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bare record of the word of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of his prophecy and keep those things that are written therein, for the time is at hand. Also Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, After this I looked, and, behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. Which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Now, I make this declaration. That those things which John saw in heaven had no allusion to anything that had been on the earth previous to that time. Because they were the representation of things which must shortly come to pass, and not of what has already transpired. John saw beasts that had to do with things on the earth, but not in past ages. The beasts which John saw had to devour the inhabitants of the earth in days to come. Revelations chapter 6 verses 1 to 4, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and beheld a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that set thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. The book of Revelation is one of the plainest books God ever caused to be written. The revelations do not give us to understand anything of the past in relation to the kingdom of God.